For the longest time, I always figured Just Set Radio only had two games, the original game on the Dreamcast and Just Set Radio Future. And then it just ended there with nothing more than just cameo appearances and crossover games. However, that's not the case. There was actually another Jet Set Radio game to come out a year after the release of Future. A port of the original Jet Set Radio on the Game Boy Advance. This port was published by THQ and developed by Vicarious Visions. You may be familiar with Vicarious Visions as they are responsible for the GBA Crash games and the Insane Trilogy. They have a pretty insane track record, mostly working on a lot of portable versions of games like Spongebob's Battle for Bikini Bottom and the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. They stepped up to the plate to do a GBA port of the original Jet Set Radio. Really enough, this wouldn't be the only thing Sega has ported to the GBA. They've done it for Choo Choo Rocket, Cosmic Zone, Crazy Taxi, Super Monkey Ball, and Space Channel 5. With that all being said, how well did Jet Set Radio translate to the Game Boy Advance? God. Before we even get to how I actually feel about this game, there is something very impressive about this port. This is a port of the original Jet Set Radio in the truest form possible. The game is played in an isometric perspective, but the goal is still the same. You're put in this big open area, you have graffiti spots to spray, the cops come in and try and stop you, and you do your best to clear the graffiti while racking up the highest rank. I'm not kidding when I say that this game is a direct port of its console counterpart. The stage layouts are the same as the console version with minor tweaks to better suit the isometric view. The ways in which you unlock characters are the same, what the Rokaka police come out to attack with is the same, and of course the level progression is the same. This is truly just a portable version of the original Jet Set Radio and I'm very impressed that they were able to attempt to maintain the size of its console counterpart to give Nintendo owners a similar experience as possible to this Dreamcast classic. But after you look past this and start really playing this game, you start to slowly descend into madness and realize why this port should forever stay in the trenches. You want to know what I think is the most important thing for Jet Set Radio and other games like it to get right for the game to be good? The controls and physics. The original Jet Set Radio has a much larger focus on building up momentum and using that momentum to keep moving on rails longer, trick off jumping off the rails, and making jumps over large gaps. Boost Dash is essentially for your best movement options and helps you keep gaining higher scores. Jet Set Radio Future is less focused on momentum with the game letting you reach your speeds easier and more about being precise with your platforming and maneuverability both on the ground and in the air. Both have their pros and cons, but both games successfully translated their control scheme for the setting they're doing. Jet Set Radio GBA is replicating the control of its console counterpart, but everything is made to be worse. In this game, you build up way too much momentum. You go extremely fast when boost dashing, and it's pretty annoying when you're trying to do jumps and your character really starts soaring in the air with how much floatier you are in this game. And that momentum carries on even after letting go of the controller if you do a boost dash. Your character will just continue to slide, even when you're not inputting anything. This actually makes the platforming annoying because a lot of the times you're going to slide off once you land on the platform you wanted to stand on. Now, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't mention the OG game having similar issues with its stiff controls, but at least in that game during jumps, it was easier to hold your momentum when holding back. Not so much with this game. In this game, there's a bit of a delay when you're trying to stop yourself after a jump to break, and if you're not doing it in time, you're gonna slip off again. Another rough thing about the isometric perspective is the depth perception. There have been countless times where I thought I landed on a grind rail and I find myself completely missing the platform I was trying to land on because I can't properly gauge where it is. You can only see so much on a GBA screen too, so some jumps end up being leaps of faith and you just gotta hope that you're not too far left or too far right in the hopes that you land on the next grind rail. 
Jet Set Radio wasn't a particularly hard game, but it was certainly no pushover. While trying to balance racking up scores and spraying all the graffitis, the Rococo Police and Golden Rhinos were always there to interrupt your progress. They had a decent range of sights to find you, and you always gotta pick and choose what graffiti to get first and find the most optimal route to avoid as much contact with them as possible. In this game, the Rococo Police are completely a non-issue. They move way too slowly to the point where you could just not hold the controls and watch them snail pace their way to you. The area of sight is also really bad and you can just go past them. Not everyone is completely useless though. Onishima has amazing accuracy and the helicopter still has its tracking missiles. But not even the flying dudes from fight or flight are a threat. And they're the most annoying enemies in the original game. Now they just exist to stand there I guess. The Tiger's Tag missions are actually much easier since you won't be dealing with a herky-jerky resetting camera all the time when you spray, but you also knock down the rivals to spray them down. So it's significantly easier to do Tiger's Tag just because you can knock down the rivals. I wish they kinda had this in the original game. Now I may have lied and said that this game is a one-to-one -one port of the OG game, but there is something different. So, you know Bantam Street and Grind Square, right? Yeah, they're in this game too. Well, Bantam Street is in this game, but not Grind Square. Well, Grind Square is technically in this game, but not really. They actually make you play Bantam Street twice in Chapter 2, with only small changes to the graffiti spots. Now, while I think it's pretty lazy that they did this, Boy, am I glad there isn't another version of Grind Square in this game. Oh my... No way, bro. What? Let me see. Oh, no. They're they're fully dressed in the... Oh, nah. Oh, that does not look right. Excuse me, what? Is that supposed to be the Whip Assassin? They don't look like that in the console version oh no see i understand some things being a product of their time but changing existing enemy design to reflect this very problematic depiction of arabs after the tragedy of september 11th 2001 from a game in 2004 when the original enemy didn't look like this in the first place why did they do this what was the reason for this? This really made me uncomfortable when I got here. And I, I still can't fathom that this is actually in the game. While we're on the topic of visuals now, this game is hideous to look at. This game was never going to be able to do something amazing with the GBA's limitations, but what they tried to do, I can't even properly explain. They took the models from the OG game and super compressed them into this creature. They certainly have the bodies of the characters we know and love, but they barely have faces to speak of. The actual levels themselves though, I think look okay at least, but yeah, the models, definitely not it. Especially since this game was sharing the same year as Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, Mega Man Zero Two and Castlevania Aria Sorrows. The music. God, the music. This game only has six songs in it. Ripped from the OG game, sort of. They've been chopped and compressed into a GBA sound font and this is the thing that will drive you slowly insane the longer you play this game. The same four songs keep playing, songs you know and love but they're out of tune, the voice samples suck, and the loop is so quick. With the frustration of trying to control this ice skating rink ass game and having the music be like this, I turned it off. I turned off the music in a Jet Set Radio game. That is a sin. Only this game would allow that to happen. The straw that broke the camel's back for me was when I made it to chapter 3. This is where all the levels combine together to make one big level of each area against the Golden Rhinos. In the OG game, they gave you 999 seconds to finish the stages, 
which is enough time to also get the extra graffitis and a little bit of room for error when trying to navigate to how to get to each other area in the regions. Not this game! They only give you either 450 seconds or 500 seconds to finish the level. For a first time player who's not the best at maneuvering through these stages, that is not enough time to get every graffiti. I always found myself still having a lot of graffiti spots to spray. After multiple failed attempts, I said, I'm done with this game. There are some bad games I wanted to slog through and finish, and I've finished worse games than this one. Oh, trust me, I have. But I had enough of this game, and the music was giving me a headache. The final boss isn't even worth it. You're not even fighting Goji. He's not even here. You're sealing up black holes to Sweet Soul Brother and to constantly hear this distorted DJK sound clip every time you fix one up. Rana, Soda, I'm sorry I didn't recruit you, but I already know both of you are equally as ugly as the rest of the cast. This game sucks. There's nothing to sugarcoat about it. I gave it an honest try, and I did the best I could to try and finish it, but this game is not worth the effort of finishing. From the terrible controls, the ugly visuals, the obnoxious music, there's a reason why the community doesn't acknowledge this game like an unwanted child. This boo-boo ass port will continue to stay in the trenches for the rest of eternity. If you're still curious about trying to see what this game is like, go ahead and play it for yourself. Me though, I'm done. This game sucks. Side note, can you believe that this game actually has multiplayer? What would multiplayer in this game even look like? I can't imagine it will function well because this game already has frame rate issues. So why would you want to play this with multiple people? I, I don't want to know. And I think we will never find out what multiplayer would have looked like for this game. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure you leave a like and comment your thoughts on it. If you're interested in seeing more of my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get a notification for my next upload or stream. And if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing IRL, you can always go to the description and follow my Twitter. Anyways, thank you all for watching and take care.